Old apple tree, we wassail thee and hope that thou will bear. Hatfuls, capfuls, three bushel bagfuls, and a little bag under the stairs. We're here in Somerset in England, the heartland of British cider production. We're gonna meet Julian, the man responsible for producing some of the most fine handcrafted cider in the country, but also some of the best cider brandy I've ever tasted. Follow me down there into the orchard and we're gonna learn a little more about Britain's national drink. Evidence of cider making in Great Britain goes back as far as 3000 BC, where it's believed crab apples were juiced and fermented. But it wasn't until Roman occupation that our cultivating techniques and brewing practices really began to take off. After the Romans left, we go through a bit of a dark ages period without much written about cider production. But I think it's fair to say brewing probably continued. I mean, they weren't just making apple pies. After the Normans invaded in 1066, they brought with them advanced press technologies, but also high tannic cider apple varieties that elevated our game even more. By the time we reached the 1800s, cider was the preferred drink of the nobility. In fact, uh, an apple and raspberry ferment was the drink of choice for ladies of the nobility. But the, the piece de resistance, the icing on the cake of British cider heritage, the Royal Society supposedly has papers that accredit a sparkling cider production uh, produced with a secondary ferment in glass bottles stocked with cork to West Country cider producers before the man who invented champagne, Mr. Don Perignon, was even born. So the French may be uh, forever indebted to West Country cider producers for their method traditional champagne. Bonjour, chaps. <laughs> I mean, the truth is that, as I said, the Normans really are accredited to bring over the tannic apples that help our cider be so good in the first place. So, less we get too smug about things. Bonjour. Julian, here we are in your shop, and how long have you been running it? How long have you been creating? I, I've been making cider for about fifty years. We've been making brandy for about legally for thirty years. Um, legally. This, is, this is a cider shop which has been certainly here for three hundred years, and so we were always one of the best farms for making cider in the area. The art and the craft of blending traditional cider is the art and the craft of blending the up to 200 varieties of cider apple which we grow. 200 but, varieties, yeah. right. But, but we have 180 acres of orchard, which I suppose is about 15,000 apple trees. And we, we blend those apples to make the sort of cider. That's how craft artisan cider is made. Industrial cider is different. They rather like making fruit ciders. For the underage market, but uh, here we are, sort of grown up cider makers. Distilling cider is what cider maker, makers do when they grow up. But in a way, the cider world needs distilling to add to the world of cider. French wine has cognac and armagnac to go with it. Yeah. Uh, 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 and we need some classy drinks to go through the. Uh, into the market from the orchards of the West Country. And so before we go on our tour, this is an apple aperitif, which is cider brandy. Thank you. And the juice of the Kingston Black Apple, 18%. Cheers. It's the starting point of our distilled range. And drink it if you have to. Keep your that, glass with you because we'll put more things in the glass before we're finished. That is absolutely delicious, let's thank walk, you. Let's, let's, let's walk through these giant doors here. Let's go. 
<laughs> what through here? Oh my god, it's a huge barrel. We're just about to follow Julian. This is uh, very fruit heavy, You're getting the apple coming through. The alcohol's mild on the back palate. It's there though, it's the warmth. And I love the idea of using it as a kind of Pim's drink. Let's follow, let's go through here. I think there's something quite exciting. So this is 300 years old. Where are we right now? During huge vats through there. You're in the cider shed. So we have huge oak vats through there, which is one of the biggest one holds 10,000 gallons and they're oak. This is cider ready to go out to pubs, different places, we'll put it in smaller containers. You might bottle it. And so this is barrels play an important role. Some of our vats are stainless steel. Some of them are uh, uh, fiberglass wine tanks. Uh, uh, quite a lot is wood. And wooden vats and barrels play a very important role uh, in, in our aging process. So we are cider makers, so we like to have wood. So that's a very important part. What kind, is this oak? That's oak, yes. These are oak, and it's, does it matter? Is it French oak, American oak? Do these things matter? For cider, it looks like it doesn't matter, but for brandy later on, you'll see it matters. It's incredibly important. So all the, not, a lot of the cider is just aged in oak barrels for a little bit of time. Yes. Yeah, lovely. But for, but for brandy, it might be aged anything up to 20 years. How much cider do you produce it? About. 200,000 gallons, I suppose, a million litres. A million litres, a year. And half of that we turn into spirit. It sounds like quite a lot, but it sort of goes. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Could we let our viewers at home know what this book is? This is something really, really special. We'll get a close-up on it in a second. This, this book. This is a treatise of cider, written in, printed first in 1678. Um, and on page 190, it says, you may after due fermentation extract spirits, commonly called brandy, in great plenty, very excellent, quick and burning. And then a whole lot more about the cider making process. Um, this thing is very important because basically fruit makes a brandy and cereal makes a whiskey. Um, and, um, but this gives us a history to 1678. Which is the first written evidence of brandy making in... In, in the past we used to have problems with the north of the border when they said we're not brandy. But brandy, cider brandy, is protected because in hair, a book to 400 years old defines English. The whole view, uh, so it is quite clearly cider brandy is what was used as the words. And there we are, that was a beautiful book. It's there in front of us, it's absolutely stunning. Well, I've got new there. Yep. This firstly is our bonded warehouse where we mature spirits. But this isn't a spirit product, this is a fermented product. But we make here, we store in here, this is what, like ice wine, this is ice cider. So we freeze the juice of the apple, ferment the juice of the apple, and produce a very sweet sort of pudding wine. Some people might say it's grandma's pudding wine. Some people would say, a lot of them would say, but it's brilliant for cocktails. So you freeze the apple, you freeze the juice? Freeze the juice. Freeze the juice. And then... What does that do? Uh, takes out the sugar, takes out the, 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 the water goes to white ice, which is just water. Right. And then leaves all the taste components behind. And then and you then ferment, we ferment it. that. Right. And, ah, that makes sense. Uh, so this is a very sweet product, and it's, it's, it's a lovely... Um, 11% product. Cheers. Yeah. It will give you a shock. That's it. amazing. It'll give you a shock. But if you decide to walk off in a half, wow. 
you'd still have a lovely taste of apple for the next half an hour. It's really apple, for it's intensely apple. And intensely everything. Inten yeah, it's almost caramelly. Yes. It's beautiful, really beautiful, what a product. Let's drink some more, great. <laughs> Thank you. This is Somerset Pomona. We would say- Pomona. Pomona. Right. From the, 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 the Latin for God of apples or God of fruit. We would say this is the drink to go with a good cheddar. And Somerset is the home of cheddar cheese. And so this is for the cheese board and it seems that all the cheese producers in Somerset would say this is their chosen accompaniment for good cheddar. We, uh, this morning, before we came to you, we did a cook-up. We made a grilled cheese sandwich using some extra mature cheddar amongst some other <coughs> Gruyere and Emmental. And uh, had we have not been driving here, we could have drunk this with it. <laughs> like the heathens we are. <laughs> but, 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 but certainly, it's beautiful. A, a restaurant in Somerset ought to have this on the cheese board. Absolutely. Uh, otherwise, they're missing a trick. Yeah. But beautiful. actually, London restaurants have been hugely enthusiastic and, uh, and supportive. Uh, it's finding its way, and we, we certainly wish to be a niche of English food and drink. And this is the flagship that we'll put this on. This is an this absolutely is, beautiful product. This is, this is Cheers. Cheers. Well, thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for your passion. <laughs> chin chin, thank you for your product. And here's to cider. And here indeed is to cider brandy from yourself. And long may it continue as British tradition. So I have a daughter who you met. Cheers. Who's rapidly becoming in charge. And um, uh, so we have a future. And that's important. That is important. I'll drink to that. Like, subscribe, and if you haven't been here, and if you haven't drunk Julian's product, get your hands on some now. It's <laughs> phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Get your lips around that, Klaus. Guys, that was Global Food Quest exploring cider in the West Country, getting cider delic, that's the cider bus from Glastonbury. If you haven't been here, come there, visit the farm, try their products. Cheers. Damn, that's good. Wallet.